about units of concentrations in analytical chemistry. So for the lesson outline, we will have the definition of solutions, after which it will be followed by the different concentration units, and we will also have some sample problems. For the goals of this lesson, first, we have to calculate and use the concentration units molality, mole fraction, weight percent, parts per million, and molarity. And of course, we will have to recognize the difference between molarity and molality. Here are some examples of solutions. We have coffee, wine, air, brass, steel, natural gas, vinegar, and blood. So, in solutions, meron tayong dalawang component. The first one is the solute, which is the substance that is dissolved. We call this the minor component. On the other hand, we will have the solvent. The solvent is the substance doing dissolving, and this is the major component. And in most general chemistry applications, water is the solvent that we use. That's why we call it the universal solvent. Okay? Most polar solutes dissolve in water, which is also categorized as polar. You have to remember the rule of thumb, like dissolves like. So, in solutions, we have the solvent and we have the solute. So, if you add the solvent and solute together, ang makukuha natin is the solution. So, more about the definition of solution, it is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances in a single phase. And by convention, the component present in largest amount is identified as the solvent and the other component is the solute. So now let's go to the different concentration units. Here are the, here are, ito yung mayon. We have molarity, represented by capital letter M. Molality, represented by small letter M. Mole fraction, represented by X sub N. And weight percentage, or mass percent. We also have parts per million and parts per billion. The last three, weight percentage, parts per million, and parts per billion, all have similar formula. Ang magkakaiba lang sa kanila is their multiplier. For mass percentage or weight percent, of course, the multiplier will be 100. For parts per million will be 1 million. And parts per billion will be 1 billion. So first, let's take a look at molarity. It is defined as moles of solute per liter of solution. So as you can see here, this is the formula. Okay. This is the formula. Moles of solute per liter of solution. You can also use this magic triangle here. Paano gamitin to? Kung ang hinahanap mo ay molarity, okay? So, ang formula is moles of solute per liter of solution. So, tatakpan mo itong side na to. Okay. Now, if ang hinahanap mo naman ay moles of solute and you are given molarity and liters of solution, okay, takpan mo yan, tap, then the formula will be molarity times liter of solution. Okay. Now, another important concept for this is that you need to know how to compute for the molar mass. So, for the molar mass, kailangan natin yung um, mass ng given mo. And then, of course, you need to um, take note of the number of moles. Okay. So, ganun din, you can use the magic triangle for that. Now, how do we compute four molar mass? Okay, madali lang. All you have to do is to list down the formula, just like for example, this NaCl. Okay, so NaCl. So, uh, from the periodic table, approximately sodium is 23 and approximately chlorine is 35. So, you add the two together, you end up with 58. Hence, the um, 
molecular weight or the molar mass of sodium chloride here is 58.44. Okay? Pa paano naman kapag ka may multiplier? For example, we have uh, CH, uh, CH3OH. Okay, so this is the formula for methanol. So from the periodic table as well, yung atomic mass niya, this is 12. Okay, I'm, I'm just using the approximate. No? I'm just showing showing you how to get the molar mass dito. So, ito, it's... Okay, we have 4 of it. So, it's 3 plus 1. So, from the periodic table, it's approximately 1. So, that's 1 multiplied by 4 because I have 4 atoms of hydrogen. And for oxygen, it is equal to 16. So, um, if we add everything together, the answer is approximately 32. Okay, so that will be the molar mass of this compound. Okay, so clear na tayo sa pagkuha ng molar mass. Now, let's have a sample problem. Okay, we're, we're asked to take the or to compute for the molarity. So, 0 0.175 grams of ammonium acetate is dissolved in water to make 45 ml of solution. So, we're asked to find the molarity. Again, the molarity formula is M is equal to mole per liter. So, the liter here, dapat tandaan natin na yung liter na yan ay liter of solution. So, uh, from the problem, okay, we, we, we can get the mole of ammonium acetate by converting this uh, 0 0.175 grams into the number of moles. So, um, the molar mass of ammonium acetate is 77.08 grams per mole. Alright? And so, um, the solution will be 0 0.175 grams all over 77.08 grams per mole. So, magka-cancel out yung grams. We are left with mole. And then, we divide that by 0 0.045 liter. Okay. Take note that 45 ml ang given. That's why you need to convert it to liters para um, um, tumugma siya dun sa formula. And then, by doing the calculation, okay, we are going to get 0 0.051 M. Okay? So, ensure also that we are following the correct number of significant figures. So, this is a, a multiplication division operation and the rule states that we're going to follow the number of significant figure na mas mababa. Okay? That's why we express our answer in two significant figures. Alright? So, now let's take a look at the difference between molality and molarity. Okay? So, for molality, take note of the spelling. This is now moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Okay? So, it is represented by the small letter M. Okay, so these are the basic def, uh, the basic differences between molarity and molality. Okay? Um, nakikita natin yung first three na yan sa formula. But take note of this last three differences. Molarity is affected by changes in temperature. Okay? Molality, on the other hand, is not affected by the changes in temperature. We have to consider that the, the fact that molarity is moles per liter. And the fact that this is volume, okay, we know that volume is affected by temperature. Whereas, dito nakalagay, mole per kilogram, mass is not affected by temperature and of course also pressure okay that is the reason why molarity may be imprecise or inaccurate and molality is very precise and accurate but of course 
merong mga merits din yung molarity. So it's easier to prepare because the the the, the um the parameter for the dito is actually solution. The entire solution, not the solvent. Okay? So meron silang uh, gamit. That's why until now, hindi natin maitapon si molality or hindi natin maitapon si molarity. May kanya-kanya silang paggagamitan. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this number 2 problem. What is the molality? Okay. We have 1.5 times 10 to the 3 liters of water is added to 20 pounds of magnesium sulfate. So, magnesium sulfate is MgSO4. And the uh, the molar mass of MgSO4 or magnesium sulfate is about 120.38 grams per mole. Alright, so ang hinahanap natin is molality. So ano ulit yung molality? Mole per kilogram solvent. Okay, mole solute per kilogram solvent. Okay, it's not straightforward. First, we have to find for the mole of the solute. And to do that, kailangan natin i-convert yung 20 pounds of magnesium sulfate into grams and after that, into mole. So, we have 20 pounds. Okay, binigay yung conversion factor. So, we first convert that to grams. So, 4, 5, 3. 0.59 grams and then after that we convert it to mole so 120.38 grams okay one mole so note that we can now cancel units ayan so ang lalabas dito sa computation ko na to is mole it will be equal to um okay 75 0.36 Okay. Now, we have here 1.5 uh, times 10 to the 3 liters of water. We also have to note that we're going to convert this liters to to its mass. No, Kailangan natin ng density. So, we know for a fact that um, the density of water is approximately 1 kilogram per liter. Okay? So, dahil 1 kilogram per liter, automatically, we can say that this is equivalent din sa kilogram. So, para makuha natin yung malality, we just have to divide 75.36 by 1.5 times 10 to the 3 or this is 1,500, no? So, our final answer now will be equal to point 051 m okay all right so let's take a look at other um, concentration units such as the mole fraction which is represented by x sub n so kung mapapansin natin dito there is what we call total moles in solution so kailangan natin hanapin yung total moles of the solution Okay, and since dalawa lang naman yung component ng solution, we have the solute and the solvent, okay, if we add the mole fraction of solute and the solvent, the answer should always add up to 1. Okay, that's why in this uh, equation, small letter n represents the solute, big letter n represents the solvent. Therefore, small n plus big n is the total, the solution. Okay? Another is the weight percent. So, in weight percent, we have mass naman dito of A all over mass of A plus mass of B. So, technically, this part here pertains to the solution. Okay? And the numerator here talks about the component. It could be the solute or it could be the solvent. Take note that the multiplier is 100. Okay? Now, let's take a look at sample problem number 3. You add 1.10 kilogram 
of glycol as an antifreeze to 3 kg of water in your radiator. What is the weight percent? So, hanapin muna natin or we have to identify first yung solute tsaka solvent natin. No? So, for what is this? Uh, 1.10. Okay. This 1.10 kilogram here is my solute. And this 3.00 kilogram there is my solvent. So, solute plus solvent equals solution. So, the total mass of my solution is 4.10 kilograms. So, this is important because we are talking about the weight percent. So, therefore, what is the weight percent of the antifreeze? Okay, so, simple. We have 1.0 or 1.10 divided by 4.10 times 100%. Okay, so, if we perform this calculation, we are going to end up with 26.8%. Okay. So, what is this 26.8%? This is for the glycol. Therefore, if I'm going to ask you, what will be the percent of water? Okay. Eddie, dalawa lang naman sila sa component. 100 minus 26.8. Okay, whatever it is, so let's see. Okay, I have 73.2. So this will now be the percentage of water. Okay, so this is percentage of water. Okay, now let's take a look at parts per million. Okay, so this is the mass of solute over mass of solution times 1 million. Or also, pwede rin PPM kung gusto natin, no? parts of solvent over solution times 1 million. But take note also that PPM is used in a ve para sa mga small quantities like the trace uh, for trace analysis, yung mga ganun. So, yun nga, no? that's why you have 1 in a million kasi napakaliit lang ng component niya compared to the bulk. Okay, so we can use this in... Um, this formula or alternatively there is another way for you to compute for the ppm and that is equal to mg per liter so ppm or parts per million is also equivalent to milligram per liter okay now let's take a look at problem number four now this time around we only add 1.10 gram of glycol as an antifreeze to 3 kilogram of water. So take again the masses. So mass of the solute is 1.10 grams. Tapos mass ng solvent is 3 kilograms or in terms of grams this is around 3000. Okay? I-unify ko na yung unit nila para mabilis, no? So, the total is 3,001.10 grams, no? Now, what will be the uh, working equation? So, 1.10 divided by 3,001.1 okay, times 1 million, so or times 10 to the 6. So, this is parts per million. Okay. So, if you perform this calculation, this will be equal to 357 parts per million. Okay. Let's go to number 5. An EPA regulation or Environmental Protection A Agency sets the concentration limit for copper ion in drinking water at 1.3 ppm. A 500 ml bottle of mineral water is found to contain 0.80 mg of copper. Is it safe to drink based on EPA standard? Okay, so, hanapin natin yung parts per million. Sabi natin kanina, ppm is equal to mg per liter. 
Now, given na nga sa atin yung 0.80 mg all over 500 ml. So, that is equal to uh, 0.5. Okay. So, we already have mg per liter. So, based on this calculation, um, the answer is 1.6. Okay, 1.6 ppm. Now, if we're going to refer to the standard, which is 1.3, okay, mas mataas yung copper content niya. So, is this safe? Okay, the answer is no. Okay, kasi the limit is 1.3, meaning this should be the maximum level of copper. Okay, over and above this level will be dangerous. Okay, next go, we have um, sample problem 6, conversion units. Conversion of concentration units. So, an antifreeze solution is prepared by mixing a uh, 1.0 kilogram of ethylene glycol with 4 kilogram of water. The density of the resulting mixture is 1.026 gram per ml. Express the concentration of this solution as molality and molarity. So, para sa problem na to, okay, we have to take note of the mass. Pa rin, no? Mass. And also for the ethylene glycol. Okay, sulat na lang natin. The molar mass of ethylene glycol is 62.1 gram per mole. Okay. Alright, so we start with molality. Small letter M. So this is mole solute all over kilogram solvent. Now, hanapin natin yung mole of solute. Okay, we are given the mass. So, instead of mole, we are given the mass. So, i-convert muna natin yung mass into mole. So, that's easy. We have 1,000 grams, okay, which is this one. Parehas lang sila. And then, I will have to divide it by 62.1 grams. So, 1 mole. Okay, cancel the, gra uh, the grams. So, Divide it by, okay, automatically it gave us 4 kilogram of water. So, 4 kilogram water, which is our solvent. So, by performing this calculation, we will have 4.03 M. Okay? Now, um, we go to the molarity or mole per liter of solution. So, since same sila ng numerator ng molality, okay, we just copy that. Okay, gram per mole. And then, how about the liter? Now, in the liter, hindi siya straightforward. Okay, we are given the mass of the solvent. So, paano natin gagawin yun? We know na from our previous lesson that solute plus solvent or mass solute plus mass solvent will be the mass of the solution. So, the mass of the solution here, okay, sulat ko, mass solution will be 1 kilogram of the solute and 4 kilogram of the solvent. So, if I add that together, I will have 5 kilogram of the solution. Okay, 5 kilogram solution. Now, given din tayo ng uh, density. So, we have to use the density in order to get the um, volume, no? So, that is, okay, mabilis lang, no? That's 5,000 grams, alright? And then, after that, we we'll be using the density, 0 to 6 grams ml. And then, again, further divide it with uh, 1,000, 10 to the 3 ml. 
para ma-convert natin kaagad sa liters. Okay, cancel out the units. Tapos, ang magiging sagot natin will be 4.873 liters of the solution. And then, perform this calculation. 1,000 divided by 62.1 divided by 4.873. We're going to get 3.30 molars. Okay? So, that is... Problem number six. All right, let's go with uh, problem number seven. Conversion of concentration units. We have a solution that is 20% sulfuric acid by mass and a density of 1.2 gram per ml. Calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid in units of molarity and molality. So just a trivia, this is how um, concentrated sulfuric acid will react with cloth or paper. Alright, so let's start. Sabi dito sa problem, we have 20%. Now, if you are given percentage like this, always safe to assume that you have 100 grams of the solution. Okay, this is the safest assumption that you could get kasi nga, naka-percent tayo. Remember that the multiplier of percent is 100. So, when we say that that, that the solution is 20% by mass, so, ibig sabihin, we have 20 grams of sulfuric acid. The rest will come from water, alright? Okay, so, um... To calculate for the molarity, we take 20 grams of sulfuric acid, okay, divide it by its molar mass, which is 98.1 grams per mole. Okay? So, lalabas yung mole dyan. Okay. And then, how about the volume? Okay. For the volume, we, we note that we have 100 gram solution here. So, 100 grams solution. Okay, divide it by 1.20 grams per ml. Again, convert it to liters. So, this is 1,000 ml tapos liters. Okay, by doing this, we're going to get 0 0.0833 liters. So, convert na natin tong molarity na to. The answer will be 2.45 m. Now, for the molality, for the molality, okay, ganun ulit, we have small letter m, mole per kilogram solvent. So, we 20 over 98.1. Okay, this is the uh, molecular mass or molar mass. Sorry. And then, how about the kilogram of the solvent? So, for the kilogram of the solvent, um, we will use 80 grams kasi the 20 will come from sulfuric acid, the 80 will come from the solvent. So, that's 80 um, grams Okay. And syempre, dahil water yung magiging uh, solvent natin, uh, Divide na lang natin to ng 1,000 since we're simply converting it to uh, kilograms. Okay, 1,000 grams per kilogram. Okay? So, the molality will be 2.55 m. Okay. So, now let's go to sample problem number 8. Now, you dissolve 1 mole of urea in 270 grams of water. 
what will be the mole fraction of urea? We said a while ago that the total of the mole fractions of the component should be equal to 1. So, what is x of urea here? Di pa natin alam. So, that is the unknown. Now, what do we know? Small letter n, n for urea is 1. And uh, the capital letter n, that is for water, is we have to get that paren, no? So that's 270, the mass given, all over by all over 18 grams per mole. So 270 divided by 18, we get 15. Oh. Okay. So the important parameter that we can get here is the total number of moles. So 16 plus 1 is Six, uh, 15 plus 1, sorry, is 16. So, therefore, the mole fraction of urea is 1 over 16. So, 1 over 16 will give us this answer. Okay. For sample problem number 9, we dissolved 92 grams of ethanol in 270 grams of water. What is the molality of ethanol in the solution? So, the molar mass of ethanol is 46.1 grams per mole. And we will dissolve this ethanol, 92 grams in 270 uh, grams of water. So, molality is mole per kilogram of solvent. So, first find the mole. So, 92 all over 46.1. Tapos, divide natin yan ng 270. Okay. Convert agad, no? 0.270 kilogram. So, the answer for this is 7.41. Okay. For sample problem number 10, again, we will use the same model. So, we dissolve 92 grams of ethanol in 270 grams of water. Now, let's take a look at the mole fraction of ethanol in the solution. So, the mole fraction of ethanol. Okay, so we said a while ago that, that we divide 92 over 46. Okay, 92 is yung given, 46 is the molar, molar mass. So the moles of ethanol here is 2 mole. Okay, paano naman yung water? So similar process, 270 over 18 okay, over 18 we'll have 15 so the total moles here is equal to 17 so therefore the mole fraction of um, ethanol here is 2 over 17 or equal to 0.12 Next, sample problem number 11. So this time around, we're going to compute for the weight percent of ethanol in the solution. So sabi natin, weight percent is equal to um, mass of ethanol all over mass of solution times 100%. So, given tayo ng mass ng ethanol, which is 92, over 92 plus 270, which is the mass of the solution, times 100%. So, if we perform that, we're going to have this, 25.4 as our answer. And finally, we have sample problem number 12. Old silver dollars are 90% uh, silver and 10% copper by mass. 
what is the mole fraction of silver in these coins? So, for the mole fraction, we note that we have 90, naka percent ito, no? So, again, we assume 100 grams. So, in that case, we have 90 grams of silver all over its atomic weight, atomic mass, or 107.9. Ginagawa natin to para makuha natin yung uh, moles niya. So, 90 over 107 will be 0.8. In a similar way, meron tayong 10 grams of copper. So, 10 divided by 63.5. Okay, we are going to get 0 0.157. So, what is the total moles? Okay, the total number of moles in this is 0 0.991. And so, the question is, what is the mole fraction of silver? So, simply divide 0 0.834 all over the total number of moles. Okay? So, the answer is 0 0.842. Alright. So, that is the final um, example for this topic. I hope you learned something about uh, conversion. Sana nadalian kayo dun sa pag-convert, pag-analyze uh, pag kung alin ang given, alin ang kailangan mong galawin. No? Especially in the interconversion of molarity with uh, density of the solution involved. So, if you have uh, more concerns, you can directly message me through my school email. Okay? I hope you learned something today and thank you for listening.